Hi guys. Hello. Welcome to Ed Arlene Spearcast. If you're new to this podcast, we talk about all things related to mindfulness, magic, astrology, tarot, Reiki, meditation, anything in that realm. Um, today we have a special guest. This episode is actually our first episode of the new year, first episode of season three. Season and three. Yeah, yeah. And um, these next two episodes are going to be really awesome. We are interviewing a couple, their names are Jess and Patrick, and they own a magic shop in Pittsburgh called The Menagerie. It's one of our new favorite magic shops. It's awesome. Yeah, and they're both amazing. Uh, Now, both of these interviews are completely different, so it's not a two-parter, if that makes sense. So we're going to interview Patrick in one and then Jess in the other, and they're both extremely knowledgeable on a lot of stuff. <laughs> shockingly knowledgeable. Like, shockingly knowledgeable. Like, Edda is extremely knowledgeable about a lot of stuff, and their knowledge was, like, it's step further. <laughs> they are, like, awesome. <laughs> and they know a lot, like, a whole lot. And I feel like I can learn a lot. Like, from our interviews, I learned a lot from them. One thing I admire about their magic shop, about both of them, is that interested in learning all they can on a variety of practices, even the ones they don't personally do. So that if you go to their magic shop, they can help you out and they can guide you to the direct people, the direct books, um, you know, teachers and so on that are in the field that you're in. And um, I think I admire that a lot. They're not just selling stuff without having any knowledge on what they're selling. Yes. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> I I just, I love everything about them in the magic shop, and I had so much fun talking to them. Like, we actually went to their, so we went to their store just shopping, and I got a reading from Patrick, which was really great. Mm-hmm. So definitely, they're great, you know, with their We services. can't sing their praises enough. <laughs> I, I know, like, um, you know, if you want a reading, I would recommend getting a reading from them. They also do Reiki um, as well, so, you know, you get Reiki healings at their shop. Um, they, they have like spells that you can make in shop, uh, I believe. We, I haven't made one. We haven't made it yet. They have a, yeah. a spell station where you can craft your own, um, jar, yeah. you know, whatever you need, which is really cool. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Like I've been using till some of their oils and stuff and their incense. Amazing. Mm-hmm. I've had some great, great results. I'm yeah. going to talk about this in this intro. It might be another episode. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, okay. We'll just say that she used, um, was it their passion oil? I, we need to disclose the full details of my okay. personal practice. All she wants to say is it works. And <laughs> one thing, um, you know, like her and I, we make our own oils and stuff like that, candles, what have you. But also there's something to buying other people's stuff that's really awesome. Um, you know, one, you don't have to go through the (laughs) razzle-dazzle, which is, like, nice to have it, like, pre-done for you. Um, but sometimes they're gonna be able to, like, do a healing or connect or do something that you can't do. And it's nice to have help from other people. Um, so we stay, like, supporting other witches and other, Constantly. Like, magical. I just ordered an oil Um, off of... Derica. Divine Derica. Mm -hmm. 10 out of 10. Yeah. Totally recommend. But everywhere we go, like, we end up buying at least one item that they're making that is magical because they will have a different layer of knowledge or different layer of magical access that might help combat something that you do have a block to. Oh yeah. yeah, I do believe we all have, you know, all have the power, but sometimes it's easier to have a little bit of extra. Yeah. You need help from, you know, humans and non-humans. Yeah. Like if somebody, I, so I don't hesitate to get readings and get, not uh, even close. Yeah. You know, healings and stuff like that from other people. Um, I would be a full, if I did it <laughs> personally. Um, and I think that you can always learn from other practitioners, period. There's mm-hmm. somebody, there's always something you can learn. Um, and <laughs> I'll tell you, these two guests, definitely you can learn a <laughs> lot, a lot. Like, I don't even think these interviews were long enough. I feel like if they want to come back on, we would totally have both of them on. Um, I feel like with Jess's interview, because we have some of this, I feel like it was coming out of the, like, closet a little bit for me in regards to, like, spirits, yeah. which we'll talk about in her intro, um, but I feel like I was, like, we were, like, ah, <laughs> you know, like, kind of, like, fangirling Kindred certain, spirits. yeah, and then, um, 
And with, and it's funny because, like, I remember talking to you that I wanted to find somebody who was involved in Druidism for the podcast. And then magically we meet Patrick. I, that's proof of the magic of the universe. Every yeah. time we talk about having a certain type of person or someone who specializes in a certain thing on our podcast, we end up finding them or they find us. Or they find like, us. No effort. Zero effort. Like, we yeah. happen to stumble into this store because us... Our friends were doing, we always do like a Mystic Monday situation, mm-hmm. and we go to all our magic stores in Pittsburgh and do a bunch of stuff. Mm-hmm. And we happened to go to this store, and it, we met these amazing people. Yeah. So, um, just in short, just for this interview, we're interviewing Patrick, and um, he does Druidism, and he works with the Morgan. The Morgan. Morgan. That's something we talk about in the episode, like pronunciation. Um, so now I'm, like, super, like... Hyper-focused. Yeah, I'm like, how am I pronouncing her name? So, like, I don't want to, you know, offend her. But um, it was a great interview. We also talked about other, th- other like, witchy, metaphysical things in that interview. And then Jess... We talked about lo- Celtic. Yeah, we talked about we that talk a lot. That. Um, and then Jess is a Lokian. Yeah. So we talk about um, some Norse stuff, and we talk about Loki... And we talk about some other things yeah. for her. But I think we should get into the episode. With Do you want to um, tell them where they can find us? Okay. At? So you can follow us on Instagram at Ed Arlene, on Pinterest, Tumblr, Facebook at Ed Arlene, on Twitter at EdPro underscore PGH, where we tweet a lot. And then you can follow us on YouTube, where we post Rake Infused videos almost every single day. Go like and subscribe and get that energy. And then you can go to our website, edarlene.com, and sign up for our email list to get access to a free Reiki session almost every single month. We're going to get better at it in 2023. Yeah, that's our goal. Um, I also want to um, mention that our new Oracle deck is out. Yes. And it's beautiful. Of course it's beautiful because you created I made it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just playing. So but. we have that link down below yeah. too. It's called Today's Daily Oracle. We do have a book by that name as well, so get that too. But the card deck's nice, so go check it out. Yeah, and we've been posting. So our uh, if you follow us on TikTok, we are willy-nilly with posting. We kind of post when we feel like it, but we are basically right now only posting today Oracle cards. Um, so if you want, like, a daily reading on there. Follow us on TikTok. Yeah, follow us on TikTok. Uh, link below. All right, that's all I got. That's it. We're just getting the episode. All right. Okay, guys, this is an ad. We believe in supporting small business. And today, we're talking about the small business called Garage Cats. They make 100% organic, handmade lip balm using hemp and cocoa butter. It smells amazing. It lasts for a very long time. They use eco-friendly paper tubes. They're pretty much awesome. If you are interested in supporting this business, you can find the link below or go to garagecats.etsy.com. We just want to take a quick moment to invite everyone listening to check out our shop at edarlene.com. If you like what we do, it is one of the easiest ways to support us. Plus, you will get our awesome handcrafted 100% vegan soy candles, our prints, books, oracle cards, and book a Reiki session. All of this can be found at edarlene.com and linked in the show notes. All right, guys, we're back, and as mentioned in the intro, we have um, a special guest today, and his name is Patrick, and he and his wife own an awesome magic shop in Pittsburgh called The Menagerie, and we're so excited to have them both on, so we'll have both episodes linked. Um, They're two separate episodes, and we highly recommend listening to them both. So um, before we get into it, do you want to introduce yourself and, you know, talk about, like, what you do and that type of thing? Sure. All right, so uh, as I mentioned, my name is Patrick. Um, uh, my wife, Jess, and I opened the menagerie, uh, in, uh, September of 2021, uh, you know, because that is the absolute perfect time to open a small business Mm -hmm. in the middle of a recession and pandemic. (laughs) So, you know, that just shows you how intelligent we really are. Um, (laughs) um, so, uh, you know, I spent uh, a number of years pre, uh, pre pandemic, you know, we spent a number of years in the restaurant business, it's actually how we met here in Pittsburgh in culinary school. And, uh, and it's actually kind of where our spiritual paths first started also. So if I, uh, rewind long, long, long time ago. So even as a little kid, I always felt very spiritually connected. Um, you know, I was raised Irish Catholic, um, went to Catholic school. Uh, one of the first occupations I said I wanted to be 
was not a priest, um, but Pope. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that was, you know, big, big aspirations back in the day. And uh, my mom used to love telling the story that um, I, I would ask her, what are they going to do when there's two St. Patrick's? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I've always felt the draw to spirit and religion and kind of that, that organization. And I always felt a little weird and, and a little off. And as I became an adult and started researching more and, you know, when Jess and I started connecting and talking about things, I started realizing more about my childhood um, than I ever knew back then. And, and stuff like being able to um, feel and read other people's emotions. Mm. Um, you know, I started realizing that I could tell when there were spirits in the room. I wouldn't be able to see them or hear them, but I could feel them. You know, so what made me feel weird and different and out of place and things that I wouldn't talk about, you know, when she and I met, you know, she when she first mentions, oh, I'm, I'm an empath, it's like, holy shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so that door kind of starts opening. And I think, you know, us kind of getting together and combining started opening doors for both of us. And that's why I say our spiritual journey kind of started together in that aspect. Um, before we even met, though, you know, kind of to, to show that the, the importance of religion and, and spirituality in my life, um, you know, I spent uh, about a year and a half discerning the priesthood. So I was actually in the process and getting ready to go to the seminary to become a Catholic priest. I probably could have gone immediately, but they need me to work on a few things. I, I, I had to be celibate for X length of time before they let me come in. Okay. Um, that was a very awkward conversation to have with my mom. <laughs> <laughs> Dad picked up what I was putting down and was like, I don't want to talk about it. Mom, not so much. Uh, thankfully, my mom passed away a few years ago, so she's never going to hear this and not going to get embarrassed by having to relive the, uh, the memory. That's right. Um, but, you know, so I've always felt this, this kind of call and draw to something more. Right? Okay. Um, and... So, you know, we, we kind of just started feeding off each other and, and growing off of it. And uh, one of Jess's cousins is a, a practicing witch. And she kind of would give us little tips and little guidances. And we would have more things kind of happening, you know. And, and I fully believe in the in the ideal of once you start embracing something, more things start occurring, right? And, mm -hmm. and when both of you, when you have more than one person in an area embracing more and more things are happening, right? So we start seeing yeah. more, we start feeling more, things start growing more, and we're having to ask our cousin for a little bit more advice, and then we start reading and growing and developing on our own, um, and it, it just kind of spiraled from there. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, the, the deep dive came when uh, a number of years ago my grandmother passed away, and she was, um, it was uh, my dad's mom, and they were from Czechoslovakia. Mm -hmm. And back when she was younger, she read tarot, uh, she read palms. Uh, a lot of what I'm finding out, um, the special gift side to me comes from that side of the family. Wow. And when I finally opened up to my dad and started explaining some of the gift side to it, it's like, oh, that answers some things about me as well. Okay, this makes mm. a little sense. I think mm. you got it from this side of the family. I go, I guarantee you I did. Like, I've already put that together, Pop. This is, <laughs> this is me having a drunken conversation with you, and now you're just, like, blowing my mind. Um, That's funny. I love so, when that happens. Yeah, 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 right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> So it all, you know, it, it kind of originated from Bubby, and um, she gave up the cards when she did a reading for a very close friend. And the one thing I always tell everybody, don't worry, it doesn't happen, it actually predicted her friend's death. Oh, wow. Um, you know, and, and you guys read, you know, it doesn't yeah. exactly predict it th that way, but... You know, it was it was close enough where she was like, shit. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Saw that coming. Yeah. Fuck. So she gave up the cards and refused to teach, mm. right? Mm -hmm. um, she did feel that, like, familial obligation. So she taught my sister when we were, like, knee-high to a grasshopper. So at, like, 10 years old, she spent, like, 20 minutes teaching my sister how to read tarot cards. Felt like her familial obligation was done, washed her hands of it, and it was done. And as I'm getting older and I'm an adult at this point, you know, I, I, I was telling her, I'm like, this is something part of our family is going to die. She's like, good, let that. Mm, interesting. We're not doing this. I was like, come on. She doesn't remember. She goes, that's her problem, not mine. Maybe she felt like it was a curse. She did. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. She didn't, uh, she didn't look on it as, as a good thing. Okay. Um, so when she passed away, I said to Jess, I'm like, I can't let that part of the family die. Mm -hmm. Let's start learning tarot. Yeah. So we started learning that, and that kind of just, you know, you walk into a shop like this, you see mm -hmm. cards, you see crystals, you see candles, and then you just start falling down the rabbit hole. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. And then it was, um, you know, we're talking about different uh, pantheons and different gods and forms of paganism, and I was like, you know what, we know a lot about, like, the Greeks. Mm -hmm. We know a lot about the Egyptians. Like, yeah. Everybody knows, it's almost like, you know, you kind of get, unofficially get a pamphlet somewhere in life, and, and now you know about... Yeah a couple of these pantheons. 
you know, now the Norse are kind of added into yeah. that thanks to Marvel, yeah. Yeah. which is fantastic. <laughs> um, I was like, but you know, yeah, my dad's side of the family is from, from Czechoslovakia. I really don't have any spiritual draw to that area. My mom's side of the family, 100% Irish. And I was like, I wonder what their gods were like. Yeah. So I picked up one, you know, we picked up a book and flipping through some chapters and it was so Christianized. It was ridiculous. Mm. You know, one of the first stories was how uh, the main god died because he felt Jesus die on the cross and out of anger mm. he chopped at a tree with his sword and his heart exploded. Oh, yeah. It's like, oh, at the time though, I'm still practicing Catholics. I'm like, that's so cool! Yeah. This is yeah. a link and a connection. Now I look at it like, okay, it's kind of cool because it was written by a Catholic monk and at least some of the stories got mm-hmm. to survive somehow, right? That's, yeah. We'll, we'll give him a thumbs up for that part, mm. at least. Um, but then, like, two chapters in, I read about this badass war goddess of war god, right? Yeah. And it's kind of, like, edged in my brain, and flash forward a number of years, you know, here I am, a, a devotee to um, war god, and in my studies, we'll eventually, hopefully, be allowed by her to take up a, a mantle of priesthood for her, so you're still kind of all on the same path of, of getting that, uh, that title eventually. Um, but, you know, it, it all kind of it, it grew together, and, um, you know, our paths are very, very different, but very similar at mm-hmm. the same time. Um, I've gotten to incorporate a lot of other great things into it. You know, I've, I've started studying uh, some palmistry, so I realized just the insanity of what all goes into that, so it's kind of on the back burner. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, I have handwritten notes, and, and like, I made a little guide for myself for how to, you know, what to look at and how to do it and take notes on it when I look at someone's palm and it's like 15 pages long oh my God. and I'm like, oh, this, this, this can wait. <laughs> yeah. you know? um, during the pandemic, we helped out at a, a different metaphysical shop for a while. Um, you know, I was getting unemployment. I was in the restaurant business for a long mm-hmm. time. So obviously that kind of shut everything down. Uh, so while I was on unemployment, bored out of my mind, we started becoming friends with owners in a different shop. Um, so I started working for him in exchange for um, classes on Reiki. So with that, I, I got to become a certified Reiki master, which, you know, through the attunements, you know how it is. It, yeah. it, just, it, it like, catapults you forward, right? Oh, yeah. Well, like, yeah. What was your attunement experience like? We were talking about Reiki, I'm like, I want to know. Yeah. <laughs> Insane. Yes. Unbelievable. Especially the first one. Uh-huh. The first one was absolute insanity. And, I mean, I, I felt horrific for about a day or so just because, you know, I'm so out of sorts. I feel things a lot differently. I notice things. I see things more. I hear things more. You know, and, and when I say that, I mean, like, uh, otherworldly things. You know, uh, instead of just feeling if there's a, an entity around, I catch clips and stuff. Or okay. I hear, right? Um, when I, as the attunements have advanced, it's gone from when I do a session with somebody, seeing just the colors in motion to full out scenery and images. If somebody is uh, works with specific deities, they come through hardcore when I do Reiki with that, which is always kind of fun. Mm. Um, and I, uh, my first attunement was really kind of, was my first or my second? I think it was my first. Um, the way they, they did the class, they broke it up. You know, I did one week and then come back through the second mm-hmm. week. So it was like uh, classroom classes and the second week was practical application with an attunement on both days, and in between the two, my mom passed away. Oh, my goodness. So okay. in between your first attunement and your secondary first attunement, I have this, like, massive emotional and spiritual blow of, of my mom dying. Mm. So it just overloaded. Wow. <laughs> yeah. um, wow. It gave me a very interesting experience, though, at her deathbed of feeling her energy kind of just mm-hmm. sucking in from like the limbs almost like you know when you would think like with hypothermia and, and like body temperature everything kind of like rushes to the core mm-hmm. it's kind of the same thing like everything was rushing towards her heart mm. before moving on okay. so it was it was really intense and, and kind of yeah mm-hmm. but you know and then and then with every every subsequent one after that wasn't quite as intense and as powerful but yeah everything oh everything changed every single time yeah yeah so yeah it was there I always tell people that Reiki changed my life in a fantastic way. It yeah. was one of those moments where like, we both really yeah. believed that magic was real. Yeah. Like, from that, yeah. From that. Like, that was confirmation, like, thousand percent, like, this is all real. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you, I think it's funny, like, because we've met other people, like, near attunements and stuff, and you can tell when they've had an attunement. Yeah. 
Like, yeah. you can just see it. And then, like, and you're like, I'm like, it's okay. Like, I was, like, calmer. Because for, for me, anyways, it gave me, like, perspective. I'm like, what is real? Like, like it made my priorities change dramatically, yeah. I think. Um, but it's definitely something else. So I'm always curious. Mm-hmm. For sure. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> now, and also, this is, this is kind of a fun, this ties into the other side, the, the spirituality. Um, it was also a confirmation that the more God was in my life. Mm-hmm. Because she showed up. In my first attunement. Wow. The, the master attuned it, started talking. He's like, hey, so there was this woman that showed up at this one, this one point. Everything was kind of dark. There was a, a swirling abyss and there was this woman, but she was wrapped up in like medical bandages, not quite like a mummy, but like she had been through a battle and she was bloodied and all this. So does that sound familiar? And I was like, no, mm. not really. And you know, I was, in the be- later stages, the beginning stages of, of uh, learning about the Morrigan. And as I was then reading more, and, you know, because she's, she's a singular goddess, but she's also three sisters. Mm-hmm. Right. And it, it's super confusing at times. Then some of her sister forms have sister forms. And when you look at the Bive, who's one of her sister forms, there is a, another goddess attached with the Bive who is either another form of Bive, or she is um, a sister wife, and that's Nemen, and that is how Nemen is presented mm. in Bloody Bandages. So, and I'm oh. sorry, I'm this one <laughs> <laughs> So, I didn't even notice it and realize it at the time. It took some further digging and further studying into my own beliefs and, and practices to realize that, yeah, there's still that, that connection. Mm-hmm. So, it's really kind of cool. Okay. What does her energy feel like when she comes to you? A really angry professional God <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. So, she is not a motherly goddess. She's mm-hmm. not a happy-go-lucky goddess. She can be. I mean, you know, like anybody, she can be. Uh, there's definitely been times in the last year or so where I've needed more of a pat on the back and, and a it's going to be okay, and I've gotten that from her, and it kind of wigged me out. <laughs> okay. Because... That's not normally how she is. Um, but yeah, like really stern headmistress. Okay. Right? She cares. You know she cares. But if you get the question wrong in the test, she's going to slap you upside the back of the head and tell you to redo it. Okay. Right? She has you learn the lesson yourself. Not going to spoon feed anything to you. If, if she has a lesson to give you, it's going to be a short sentence and you have to figure it out. So it's she's definitely not for everybody. Mm-hmm. You know, for, for those that need kind of that more loving feeling and, and that motherly feeling, you're not going to find it. Okay. So okay. it's it's intense, but it's phenomenal. Mm-hmm. And when she's, like, standing behind you, you know, you stand a little she's straighter. She's her, yeah. 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 Okay. You stand a little straighter. There's a little, there's a little, there's a little pride to it. You know, she's still yeah. one of the one of the deities out there that haven't gotten overly watered down and overly love and lighted. So, you know, when you, you say, like, you know, I'm going to go to the Morgoth people like, oh. Yeah. Have that, like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what I thought. I was like, oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> I have like three questions. I have one about family lines. I have another one where I want to talk about um, like the, this like darker divine feminine okay. thing that people are like talking about. Trending right now. Trending, yeah. yeah. And then, um, and I might say this wrong, but I've read that she's linked with Banshees. Is that correct? And do you hear them? So, okay, let's, we'll go that one first. Uh, so, Banshee originates from Bane She. Okay. Um, so the She is the fairy folk. Okay. Right? Mm-hmm. That's the, that is the, the, a lot of names from the good neighbors. Uh huh. Um, you know, in, in Ireland traditionally they would call them fairies. Mm-hmm. That, that would be considered insulting for the most part. I think, uh, modern times, uh, the the native and indigenous practitioners over there will reference them as fae or fairy, just so that it's easier to get the you know you say that and people instantly know what you're talking about, kind of, mm-hmm. right? Uh, but she is the the actual name for them. Um, okay. So it's just pretty much the woman she. Right? Woman she. Okay. So she she cries out as far as uh, as a death omen. Okay. Uh, so the Morgan is associated with her because. Um, in some of her stages, she is seen as the washer of the ford, mm-hmm. and she has predicted death. Right? Okay. So she, when um, armies would be heading off to battle, if you saw the wa- the washer of the ford cleaning your armor, that was the that was you getting told 
you're done, buddy. Done. Okay. This is this is where it goes for you. Okay. You know, and that was kind of just you know, it, it, but to to them that was it was like, all right, cool. This is this is where I, this is how I go down. This is you know, it was a warrior yeah. culture, so it wasn't necessarily a bad thing to me. Uh-huh. Right? But it was. You know, I'm sure there were some that were like, screw this, drop the armor and ran. (laughs) But, you know, you're not going to get out of your fate. You're going to, regardless, something's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. You know, but so because um, she had that aspect to her, you know, and then it wasn't just individual deaths. She predicted uh, outcomes of battles, Mm -hmm. uh, full wars. Uh, She actually predicted that um, when the Gales were coming to Ireland as, so the, the Irish creation stories of, um, different invasions, mm-hmm, right? Different mm-hmm. groups of people coming right. and taking over and shaping the land. Um, the two of and which is the, uh, the family of deities that the Morgan is with when their time was up and the next ones were coming in, uh, and they were looking at, okay, I guess we're going to have to fight. She had the vision of, we can't win this. Mm, okay. So that's when she's like, all right, guys, everybody, the other world, right? Okay. So she is actually, while it's now called, you know, the denotion for the, the race of people, she was actually originally the fairy mounds and, and the gateways to the other world. Okay. Right? Which is where the two Adana now resides. Mm-hmm. They went over into the other world. A lot of people then take that as they have become the she. Mm. So a lot of the gods are now seen as the fae folk. Okay. okay. Right? Um, so because of all that, it's got a little muddied on whether she is a banshee or not. The Morgana is seen as the queen of the, of the, the fae folk and of the she. Mm-hmm. So, you know, she's kind of associated with all of them. So there's, there's a loose association, but it's not a direct, like, this person is this person kind of a thing. Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. Our grandma could hear, um, Banshee, and she said, but it was for death. Like, yeah, she knew yeah. somebody was going to pass away. Yeah. And, um, and there's, there's the lore to it that anybody can hear. Mm-hmm. There's also lore that states only certain houses and certain clans. Okay. Um, so I don't think I've done enough research in it to have a full opinion on that. Mm-hmm. I don't think there'd be an entire race of good neighbors who'd be like, man, we're only going to warn these five houses. Everybody else can go. <laughs> everybody else can go for themselves. Right. Yeah. But yeah. it's one of those things. If you hear the banshee, you're fine. Mm-hmm. It, she's not telling you of your death, but somebody in your household is. Yeah, my our grandma no, could it. hear him. She's so she's was it her mom from Ireland or yeah, her mom. We get our Irish side from my grandmother, um, to my mom's mom. So we're a conglom of a lot of things, oh, cool. <laughs> um, but that's what we get like from her. And she could growing up, we would get some of that like Irish <coughs> folk magic. Mm-hmm. But I think um happens, you see everywhere with, like, older, they don't realize they're doing, like, yeah. magic and stuff. And yeah. that was one of the things she said she could hear them. Um, and she would say, like, you know, some, oh, some, something's going to happen. I can hear them. Um. And um, so we grew up with that. Just, like, if you hear them, it means <laughs> someone's yeah. passing someone's away. Go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I was, well, well, I guess we can go into, like, family lines then. Because one thing, um another thing I, would like, read was that with the two of the Dan and some Irish families... They can like link to certain deities, um, and I want your thoughts on that, like how that works. So, as best as I understand it, the the reason why there's links like that is so the concept of oh this deity is the god of this this and this yeah right that is more of a modern interpretation, and at least in Ireland it was more of they were a god or a goddess of a county and a region, mm, right? Okay. So if your clan was of that region, you're, you were of that god and that goddess. That was your goddess. That was your god. So that's why you would have that family line linked to that god. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's really cool. That's yeah. really, yeah. really cool. Yeah. I think it was a similar thing in Italy, too. Most likely, yeah. yeah. And I, I think that's kind of where all that is. And I mean, yeah, you know, because of the lures and the stories you'll have, you know, and that's where they've gotten the idea of, you know, uh, the Morgan being a war goddess. Mm-hmm. Because in a lot, you know, a lot of her lures touch on war and death. Okay, so that makes sense. Okay, so all right, she's a war goddess. Okay. You know, Brigid, a lot of her stuff has to do with smithing and the household and the hearth and fire. Okay, that makes sense on why she's seen as a hearth goddess and a smithing mm-hmm. goddess. So, you know, it makes sense on why they've been kind of assigned those names. But at the same time, it wasn't quite how it was, it was seen. But, yeah, so it's... That's that's mm-hmm. how you have those family lines that are tied to specific oh, things. Okay, that's good. Yeah. that's really interesting. Yeah. Didn't Catholicism turn some of the Celtic Celtic? I'm sorry if I'm saying it wrong. Um, into saints. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, so 
Um, the Brigid is the perfect example. Okay. So, and it's, this is a whole other naming type thing. So, uh, you have Bridget, who's actually, is also Brigid and is in some of the more traditional, uh, Brige. Mm. Um, and it's ironic because this was, uh, this past Monday's five minute mythology Monday video that we put on our Facebook. Um, so she was so ingrained in the culture and so loved by everybody when the Catholic Church was coming in and trying to convert everybody and realizing there's no way we can get rid of this person out of their lives, she got canonized in the St. Bridget. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, it's um, the nuns of Kildare kept the fire going for her. Well, St. Bridget was, or uh, the, the Bridge was a goddess of the fire, hearth, and mm-hmm. smithing. And now there's a whole nunnery that does nothing but keep her fire burning. Wow. Wow. Right? Wow. Um, the actual person that they say it's supposed to be based off of was born in 451 uh, CE, died in 525. Mm-hmm. But there are some stories that St. Bridget was a foster mother to Jesus and helped them escape King Herod when he was first born. So what's an Irish nun four fifty who was born in <laughs> 451? Why is there a, a, a story being tied to you know, his birth at zero, 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 you know? Yeah, yeah. So there's, there's connections and I forget there's one or two other, other people and other gods that that's happened to also. But yeah, there was mm-hmm. such an ingrained feeling of it. Um, but if you look at it and it's not just with, uh, uh, from the Celtic nations, you have, um, Lilith, mm-hmm. the Mesopotamian mm-hmm. cultures, you know, she became Adam's wife in in uh, lore and then to the mother of all demons um, Hecate mm-hmm. she got sucked over from Hellenism and is seen as the mother of angels so anytime they found that there was gods and goddesses they could not completely get rid of because they were so loved and ingrained they found a way to, to mix it into their mythology hmm. I wonder um, so did they do the opposite as well? Like maybe so I'm thinking of Freya in particular. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was reading that she was one of those goddesses that was so ingrained with women and they didn't want to give her up. So then it it ended up becoming an attack on anyone who was like war- they were oh you're a witch and they just start going mm-hmm. after and I don't think Freya was able to survive in the regards the way like um Yeah. The and other. that was kind of the other the other way they took it. Okay. okay. They either absorbed it or they attacked the shit out of her. Mm-hmm. And I, I think you're right. I think it was, it was Freya or Freya or Freya. I think it was Freya. It, yeah, it was. Oh, you're you're a witch and you, you meet um, the mountains on Fridays. And, yeah. Yeah. You know, gonna, she's like kill you all. And you, that's <laughs> not what she was all about. No, no. I did read with Frigg that they um some so you know you were like oh Freya Frigg they're like one they they could have been one at one point. And that they separated it and made this frig like aspect very like oh the wife and like have these attributes that they wanted women to like embody yeah. and then made Freya like oh you're you're bad. So Jess will be able to talk on that better. Yeah. Okay. Um, but as I understand it from this discussion with her, uh, they were actually two different goddesses. Okay. okay. Because one was Aesir and one was Vanir. Yeah. So one yeah. dealing with the spiritual world, one dealing with the physical world. So yeah. they were separate goddesses. My assumption, my thought and assumption is that throughout history, because it was verbal and never written down, yeah, it kind of got combined as one, and it's just recently, you know, then found later on but, okay. that oh no, these were actually two. We need to split these again, and then people are like, well, no, in these writings they were one. Now you're just splitting it because this. And uh, so everybody, everybody wants to argue yeah. something. <laughs> yeah, I think it's hard with some of the reconstructed, yeah. um, you know, belief systems. But you know, speaking of the goddesses, when I mentioned the dark divine, I notice sometimes like we try to lump all of like these archetypes. Like Lilith is not the same as Hecate as Morgan, but they fall into this like what's trending as dark divine. But they're all very different, and I wanted yeah. to know your thoughts on that and like. Um, so it's it's funny. Adam, our candle maker, he's also worked with Morgan and okay. um, with uh, Sekhmet as well. So he is okay. he is two of the the big bags. Yeah, yeah. Um, he he likes to we jokingly call the big girls club, <laughs> right? Um, Which I love. That's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the big girls club. So we we have this theory that for a long time 
they all just kind of sat back and was like, oh, screw you guys, y'all do, just do your thing. Just go, go do your thing. And now it's like, y'all have fucked up way too much, and we have to get involved again. Yeah. And either way, we're going to do it after. Okay. So it's, it's kind of a funny way to look at it, but mm-hmm. there's definitely a resurgence in Hecate mm-hmm. and Lilith and Unmortar God and Zach Ben. These darker, bigger, mm-hmm. harder, you know, heavier hitting. And I don't know if it's necessarily that spiritually things are changing mm-hmm. or if it is society is re-embracing the traits that have to be considered darker, okay. you know, for the longest time. You have to be happy. You have to be good. Everything has to be yay. You know, we're starting to accept the fact that, you know, it's okay to have bad days. It's okay, you know, death isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's a transition. It sucks, mm-hmm. but it's a transition. You know, we're starting to accept these things again a little bit more. Okay. Right? Yeah. So when we accept those things, everybody would kind of push them in the closet because they stand for the things that are not necessarily what proper society talks about. Now we're talking about it again, so they're, they're recognized a little bit more. Mm, so okay. whether it's that or we done screwed up and they have to come in and fix it. I yeah. But... I'm kind of glad they're coming back through. You know, yeah, it's, it's a, a little bit more of a serious feel to it. Mm-hmm. Um, and the best part, though, is their their real aspects are coming through, mm-hmm. right? It's We have definitely people come in here, and Hecate is kind of the perfect example of it. There is this love and light, motherly coddling aspect of her mm-hmm. that for some weird reason has become really popular. And when you look at the lore, when you actually study her, that's not her. You know, they tried doing it with the Morgan a little bit, but, you know, I think the Irish native practitioners kind of slammed that (laughs) book shut real hard. (laughs) Um, You see it with Santa Marta a Mm -hmm. a lot. There's actually almost like half of a a, a book that's dedicated to the, she is not a fluffy bunny and she's going to f*** your world up if you don't (laughs) respect her aspect to it, right? And... But those aspects are kind of, you know, we, we still see them coming in, but they're getting pushed to the side more and, and the reconstructions and the real aspects of them are being worked with and, and worshipped a little bit more again, which is fantastic. Okay. As, as a reconstructionist myself, I love seeing that. You mm-hmm. know, it's important to modernize things, but at the same time, it's really important to uh, respect the lore and the history and the backing to it. You know, because we got here for a reason. Yeah. So. It's yeah. crazy theory. Like, do you think because of the whole ascension situation that's uh, happening with the world that we're raising the vibrations to the point where they can come in easier? Do you get something? Because like, there's been a massive resurgence in, on all the pantheons, it seems. They're all contacting. And, like, there's, like, physical. Like, openly. Yeah. So I don't know if it's necessarily a raising of the vibration. And that may be the way to put it. I might, I might be, I might talk myself into a, into a circle here. So I think at the very least, it is, you're seeing people are breaking away again from traditional religions mm-hmm. or what the modern traditional religions. Yeah. And are, dad, if you hear this, I'm sorry, thinking for themselves mm-hmm. for once again. Mm-hmm. Yes. Which I guess essentially would be raising their vibration. So yeah, yeah. Yeah. We're talking, like I said, we're going to talk yeah. ourselves in a circle here yeah. and come back to the, <laughs> the higher vibrations. And I think that's why we're seeing that resurgence. Yeah. Because now more than ever, at least in the last six, seven thousand years, people are breaking away from just what they're taught as a kid. Oh, fully, yeah. They're stepping out of it and they're asking why. They're going, oh shit, there's something else out there? Yeah. And they're embracing it, which is fantastic. You yeah, know, and yeah. it's, it, we, we stopped becoming a society, at least on the religious side, of asking, you know, I was... The parish I grew up in, I was very lucky. You know, when you hear all these people, you know, I hear a lot of horror stories of people growing up in the Catholic Church. Oh, we learned to hate this, and we hate these people, and we hate this. And we did. I never learned any of that, right? And one and one of the key ones I keep hearing is, you should never question things. We had the same pastor for about 20 years in our parish. He loved it when we questioned things. He always said, you should question your faith all the time. Because in questioning it, you're going to study it, you're going to learn it, and it's going to grow stronger. Well, you know what? Sometimes it doesn't grow stronger. Instead, what you do is you find the the religion and the faith and the the gods that you're supposed to be with. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what's happening. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, When you look at it on the vibrational level, yeah, it's definitely raising the vibrations. Mm -hmm. And it's it's opening people's eyes. And and it's, you know, lending the ways to to kids like ours that will have that choice right from the the beginning. Yeah. 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 That's awesome. I, like, I agree with, like, what both you guys are saying. I think that... Like, there's a combination of people just being tired 
And mm-hmm. if you look at what some of these spirits represent, it is about like changing things, like dismantling things yep. and like kind of growing. And I, you know, as like people, so that's like what they do. So I think that's kind of cool that they're showing up for like a change society, whatever the cause is, but like, you know, people are just tired of whatever. Yeah. So I think they're coming in to kind of support us and like, no, there's another way or you can think differently or look at it differently. Um, and then I think that, uh, too, like you were saying, there's different like paths that anybody can be on that they're meant to be on that gets them to their spirituality and now it's like we're seeing, oh, I can have this. I connect with this spirit and I feel like I'm being seen now yeah. by that. So it's like cool watching it. And yeah. like you were saying, like like your children have this opportunity to move into the world way differently than yeah. like say we did whenever we were growing up. Oh, yeah. I yeah. mean, even yeah. just like some of the stuff that we're normalizing now, like as a kid, like there'd be like weird instances like the banshee stuff or like um mediumship abilities that people in our family had and we keep it don't tell anybody yeah, you have to like yeah. only tell our family so like i would confide in my grandmother <laughs> and like you could now like being older and being in the world and meeting more and more people like you and jess who are all like involved and have your stories of your grandma and like this is all normal, but we made it not normal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's like refreshing. Well, you can just like knock on wood. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Throw salt over your shoulder if you spill the salt at the table. Yeah. You know, all that stuff is all rooted in, in yeah. folk magic. Yeah. yeah. We do it all our lives. Yeah. Yeah. Birthday cakes. and <laughs> Yeah. Heck, go to a Catholic mass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know. Knows that which they laugh all the time. <laughs> yeah. They're like, it's not witchcraft. I'm like, no. <laughs> you sure? Isn't it though? Isn't it? Perpetual um, burning Lindenburg. of myrrh. Because, right? <laughs> yeah. like, cleanse the candles. Space. The prayer smoke candles. Clouds. Yeah. You yeah. guys smoke cleanse. Yeah. All the prayer candles. Yeah. <laughs> You're petitioning. candles. Yeah. Intentions. The statues. Yeah. Like. <laughs> yeah. It's so interesting. Well, that's Sigils. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, or yeah, protective jewelry. Yeah, wearing oh. the cross. You know, yep. mm-hmm. I always think about that. But I don't know. You know, one thing we were talking, moving back into the Celtic mm-hmm. and beyond. I think it's so interesting with the um, like you were saying. Some people just say the two of Dana and have like are she like just this overlap with like deity and fae and. Mm-hmm. One thing it makes me think of is that you also don't treat every pantheon different, or that you treat them differently. Like, yeah. like you were saying, like it wasn't like, oh, you're a god of this, you're a god of that. It depends on like the culture and how like people went about dealing with them, yeah. which I think is really cool. But um, for our listeners, would you mind telling them a little bit about like the Celtic pantheon and like their story? You don't have to go into detail, just like the story with the two of the Dan, So perhaps. for for the Irish past, so. When you're looking at the the Celts, there's there's five different nations that go into okay. it. Um, I really can't speak on the other ones. I haven't studied much uh, into them. Um, but for the Irish path, so briefly mentioned before, you know, you have your your different invasions mm-hmm. into Ireland. Um, so we just really briefly go back to that. It was the the third invaders. Essentially, there was a primordial race called the uh, Fomorians mm-hmm. that showed up and kind of bullied the, the group that was there. And they kind of sent their people back out into the rest of the world, right? So a chunk of them went to Greece and to that area. And a chunk of them went to the Iberian Peninsula area, so over by Spain and whatnot. The ones that stayed in Ireland eventually got either killed off or died of plague. And 200 years later, you have uh, the fourth invaders who were the Fearbold. Mm-hmm. They were the ones that went to Greece. So kind of fun little aspect of that, because now you have a little bit of uh, uh, the, the Greek influence kind of coming into involved in it. And they, they board their ships and they go back to, to Ireland to reclaim their, their heritage and their homelands. And they take over and they reign there for about 30 years. And what they didn't realize was at the same time, the Tua de Danon were getting ready to do the exact same thing. Okay. So the Tua boarded their ships and went, and if I remember correctly, just to, to kind of give you an idea of the size of everything, the Fearbolg, uh, and they had like around 1,130 ships. Um, the, uh, the Tua de had about 300 ships. So a little bit of a disparity in numbers, um, but the Fearbolg, uh, one of their, their kings and their mystics had this dream and this vision that the perfect race was coming. And it was a race that was um, 
So they knew all the spells, and they were excellent in combat, and they had amazing weaponry and all this stuff. And they're, they're like, they got real nervous, essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, and then all of a sudden, boom, here's these 300 ships that show up on, on the island. Uh, and the two of the down end is like, we're finally home. This is amazing. This mm-hmm. is great. So the first thing they do is they destroy their ships. They're like, there's no going back. Yeah. We're home. And they committed. Yeah. <laughs> they committed. Because, yeah. because, like, you know, they did, like I said, they did the exact same thing the Fear Bullet did. They said, we want to go and reclaim our ancestral lands. This is, this is our home too. We belong here. This is where we want to be. And so the, the Fear Bullet send a delegate. Um, he goes over the two day dad and send a delegate and they're meeting up. They're exchanging weapons or they're feeling each other out. They're seeing all this stuff. And the, the two of day is like, all right, listen, here's the deal. Give us half the land. We want half the island. Mm-hmm. You guys take that half. We'll take this half. We'll live in peace and harmony and everything will be fucking fantastic. And they're like, nope. Oh, yeah. We ain't doing that. Mm-hmm. They're like, all right, come on. It's, it's, do it. You just don't, don't be stupid. Do it. Yeah. Like, nope. We choose war. Oh the names were fear bold. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Be stupid then. Yeah. So, you know, they start kind of amassing their army and, mm-hmm. and getting getting ready. And uh, uh, Morrigan, Maka, and Bive, the three sisters, they pretty much soar over top of the fear bold. And for three days, they rain down fire and blood and turn the skies red. And it took three days for the fear bold sorcerers to counteract this and stop it. And, of course, they're all sitting there like shit in their pants. Like, Mm -hmm. it took our top guys three days to stop this. Like, what are we doing? So, again, delegates meet in the middle. And they're like, split the island half and half, right? We're good, right? We're done, right? No, we war. Idiots. Yeah. So they go to war, and it's a slaughter. And there's a lot of of, uh, good warriors lost on both sides. But ultimately, the fear ball lose. Uh, the two they down and win. They the fear bull are like, okay, we, they're like, you can have that little area over there if you want, you know, mm-hmm. whatever. And they kind of take to these the seas and they they go away for it essentially, and that's how the two they down uh, uh, claim rule. Uh, there's you know a, a bigger and further story of uh, the Fomorians come back into play, and that kind of leads into why we celebrate Samhain and, mm-hmm. and the remembrance of that. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's that's how they came in. Uh, they eventually have to re-win their own sovereignty over this other giant race, which, side note, I think is absolutely fantastic. When you look at uh, different pantheons, there's so many stories that are very similar. Mm-hmm. You have the Tuatadanum and the Fomorians. You have um, the, uh, the Norse gods and the Ice Giants. You have the Titans and the Olympians. You have these primordial giants versus the gods. So it, it's kind of a cool little thing you see in, in a lot of the cultures all around. Um, and yeah, and then they reign for thousands of years. And, and things were good. Things were great. And, but then the, the Gauls were coming in, the, the Celts were coming in to take over. And that's when they're like, peace out. We're going to live in the other world. And, you know, they, they were still worshipped for a long time after that. Um, I want to say it was the Druids, I think, were still active until about 1100 CE, roughly. Okay. Um, in some way, shape, or form, you know, a, at that point, they were starting to mingle with the Christianity a bit, uh, probably around like 800 CE to 1100, mm-hmm. in that time frame is when you really started kind of completely going away type of deal, but yeah, so they, they reigned, even even after they went to the other world, they, the beliefs and the, the worship and the, the influence still reigned. Wow, that's so interesting. That's so interesting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh man, I was curious. I don't know much about that history, so I'm like it's <laughs> it's really kind of neat. So it's um, they're a prime example of ancient man was way smarter than we are. Yeah. So you know, uh, example being that their thought structure is so there is their creation story. Like I said, is the the five invasions. But as far as the world goes, so that's just the creation of the island. Right. That's just Ireland. That's how the mountains were made. That's how the uh, the the rivers and, and the lakes. Every invader came in and changed the landscape a little bit. But the world was already there. There's no creation of the world story. There's no destruction mm-hmm. of the world story. And that's because in, in the belief structure, time is not linear. The past, present, and future are all currently happening at the exact same time, always. So things cannot be created or destroyed if it's always happening. Right? Wow. That's string theory. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So their basic belief structures. Are what modern physics are, are just starting figuring to prove, out. That's yeah, wild. right. Wow. When you look at it, they have you know we have what is called the green world. That's mm-hmm. our world. We have Tiernanol, the other world, spiritual world. It's just multi dimensions. Mm-hmm. Again, something modern physics 
that's just recently proved. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we devolved. Yeah. It's <laughs> so, and, and these are belief structures from 7,000 years ago, roughly? Mm -hmm. My goodness. Yeah. Science is now just proving it. People are now just believing it. Yeah. They believed it that long ago. So, ancient man was way smarter than we thought. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I feel like, too, like, a lot of people who are in the spirituality or, like, you have a practice are like, we've been telling you this. Like, I'm we've screaming. been telling you guys yep. this. And, like, they're like, okay, yeah, sure. <laughs> now yep. we believe you. Um, I wanted to ask about two things. So, like, your thoughts on... Because you were mentioning how um, these, like, overlapping stories and... There's also, like, if you look up, like, let's say God, oh, we'll use Mercury or Hermes. Hermes okay. is Mercury, and then he's equated with blue, and then, like, Odin. So what are your thoughts on that? Like, do you think it's the same energy, or do you think it's just ways for people to understand the stories based off of what they, like, grew up with, maybe, or... I think it's a little combination of both. Okay. I think when you look at, um, like, Hermes and Mercury, mm -hmm. I think it's both. Okay. Or I think it's it's the same, same. I think it's the same God. I think the Romans kind of went in and said, "Oh, this is oh, this is cool." Mm -hmm. And the Greek gods were like, "We like you too. Oh, mm -hmm. well, come home with you." Yeah. And they kind of, you know, migrate. So I, I think as man moves, we bring our gods with us, right? Uh -huh. So I think that's kind of what happened there. But when you look at it as saying, like, "Okay, now Hermes is also Odin or Wu," yeah, I think that's just an association to help people understand. You know, this this is what this is who my God is, mm -hmm. and you're gonna understand it better because I'm gonna equate it to yours. Okay. So I think in that aspect, that's where those connections come from. But I think they can move and change. So I think you know, mm -hmm. Mercury and Hermes, I think are the same God, mm -hmm. but I don't think they're the same as Luna. Okay. That, see, I always thought it was a combo too. I just wanted yeah. your perspective because um, you see it with other like deities as well. He's just one that I know the most in that regard. But yeah. um, and the other question I have for you is. Have you had experiences with other, like, Celtic spirits or deities, mm -hmm. um, and how was that for you? It's very interesting. Okay. Um, so, like I mentioned earlier, uh, when I do Reiki, on, mm -hmm. on somebody who practices very heavily with a specific deity, they definitely come through. Okay. Um, you know, I did uh, Reiki with Adam the one time, and a very ferocious Black Panther face Right up in mind. Okay. Right. Because <laughs> that is the, the, the head of Sackman. Okay. Right. Very intimidating. Okay. Oh my goodness. Our friend Kendra, she works with Hades very closely and has for a couple lifetimes kind of one of the things she's learned while continuing working with him. Um, their relationship has, is very playful. So his feel and, and my interaction with him and, and her Reiki sister was way more playful. Okay. Right. But it was still a big flex at the same time from because, you know, this is my space, you know, kind of a deal. Yeah. Um, in my own workings, um, so I've recently started uh, the initiation process uh, into the path of druidry mm -hmm. uh, with the uh, the Order of Bards, Ovates, and Druids. Um, as part of that, so it's, they are very much a modern approach and uh, not quite modern, but not quite re reconstruction. So it's a little bit of okay. both. Um, but they are more of a British Isles approach to, to Druidry. Um, and I'm trying to combine what I'm learning there and throw in aspects of my Reconstructionist Irish pagan spiritual path, right? Okay. In that aspect, uh, the Dagda, uh, the good god, he is was seen as more of the god of the Druids. So I've asked him to be a part of that mm. journey with me. Uh, he is a very interesting guy. Yeah. Um, and so far from him, all I've gotten is, and it's, it's big booming voice kind of a thing. It's like, huh, maybe. <laughs> Ruins me. Come on, man. Can't we just get along? Trials and tribulations. <laughs> I love that, like, the Morgan... Am I, how do you pronounce the her Morgan. name? The Morgan. Morgan. Okay. We've also been interchanging Celtic and Celtic. Which one is Celtic? Her? Celtic. Celtic. Okay. Because okay. okay. we, okay. I've just been saying either or because I didn't know. Um, yeah. Okay. So she, I think it's funny that she's just like came so easily to you. And you she's like really intense, and and then he's like, well, <laughs> prove it. There's also the fun aspect that he is her husband. Okay. Um, That's really okay. cool too. That's really cool. Yeah. 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 <laughs> It's not a traditional marriage kind of okay. a deal. Um, there's really not mention, mentioned of it in the lore that I've found so mm -hmm. far, other than an annual coupling and getting together uh, a couple weeks before Solemn. Okay. Um, 
and his energy is completely different because he's, I mean, he's a partier. He is a fertility god. Mm-hmm. He's a god of plenty. He's a god of, I mean, he, his name translates to the good god. Mm-hmm. And it's not because he's a good dude. It's because he's freaking good at everything. Uh-huh. Right? He's just awesome. So, yeah. <laughs> and, he's just awesome. you know, he's, sometimes some of the best depictions you can go to is um, Christmas Carol. The uh, uh, god of Christmas present, mm-hmm. you know, like that big burly bearded yeah. dude that's like chowing down on all the food because he carries a giant cauldron with him. It never goes empty, so he's always able to to feed. He's always able to give meat. He's always able to you know give drink yeah. and food, and you know he's an amazing harpist, so he's always able to to provide music. He carries a giant club that can both give and take life. Some think that that is a euphemism for carrying a big club, because he's known for that as well. <laughs> but so you know, he's a very big personality. Okay. Um, I think that was just more of a thing of like, I'll be down, mm-hmm. but just show me you're serious about having me around. So okay. you know, it's one of those things of make a, make a space for me. Okay. Right. So build a little altar for me. Get get an item or two for me. At least burn a fucking candle for me. Kind of. Uh-huh. Um, this is might be silly, but are there more like male god, like the masculine energy gods that are more party, fun, and um, like Apollo is like for the arts. Yeah. I know every god has their duality, <laughs> mm-hmm. but it seems like a lot of the female feminine energy ones are always the ones that are like super duper or the mother or the mother like they're super motherly or they're super protective or they're super warrior i'm curious about that like why does the like the feminine ones end up being like super badasses like athena because you women are super badasses i found at least in in now i don't get me wrong i have not dived in i haven't dived into the more obscure and, and all of the gods in the irish path uh but I do believe there is a counterpart to each. Like, so the Morgon is a fe- is the female goddess of war. Yeah, there is a male god of war. Okay, I cannot okay. remember his name because I mean, modern Irish is very difficult to read mm-hmm. and pronounce. Yeah, ancient Irish even more so. <laughs> yeah, I can totally see that. <laughs> so um, there seems to be on that aspect a little bit more reflection. Okay, but I see what you're saying on that, and, and there's I'm just curious. Yeah. Like a girl party god. Like, I'm sure there are, we just, I'm not informed on it, but it just seems like, especially with like the whole divine feminine rising situation, it seems like a lot of the darker feminines like Lilith and Mm -hmm. the Morrigan, who's warrior, (laughs) are stepping forward and assisting people. I mean, I know the Orishas that there's, um, and I'm not too familiar with them, but I know there's like elements of like beauty and dance. I think like Oshun, she's very much like into like music and stuff like that. And I think Yamaya also has this like fun, like celebrating like type of mm-hmm. energy with her, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, the limited research I've done on them, yeah. I think you're accurate on that. Mm-hmm. But I think all the goddesses carry that thing of fuck around and find out. Yeah. I think the gods kind of do also. Mm-hmm. But I think some of it is going to reflect on who who carried this narrative for, for so many years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's going to be yeah, the modern religions. Yeah. That's going to be the Christian churches, which is very patriarchal. Mm-hmm. Right? They demonize the strong females. So that could be why it seems like the women are this... The, the strong kind of darker feel mm-hmm. to them because those were shown as negative. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. And you don't yeah. want to be so like, you don't to want to be it. like that. Yeah. So be a good little girl and get your butt in the kitchen, take the shoes yeah. off and get yourself pregnant. So that makes, okay, there you go. can't have fun. Yeah, yeah it makes sense. It makes sense too. So I think that's probably less of an issue when you look at it from the reconstructionist and mythology side mm-hmm. and more of the who has been telling the modern tales of it. Yeah. Okay. Because, you know, it, and it's not necessarily because, you know, women are bad, but it was because the the group that came in decided they wanted to be patriarchal, and the best way to do that was to knock out who was in charge, and in most of the pagan cultures, women held high, high regards, mm-hmm. especially in the religious yeah. aspect. Mm-hmm. So they were instantly demonized. So, you know, and... And in the Christian churches, and or I should say the Abrahamic, not necessarily just the Christians, in the Abrahamic faiths, um, the power had to be on the clergy, mm-hmm. right? So you're stripping the power from the people 
by taking the most powerful goddesses and turning them into something evil and shadowy and shoving them off to the side. Yeah. So I think that's probably where that disparity okay. kind of comes from. Yeah. yeah. This is like one and then, the and then the strong men were made to look like goofy partiers. Mm. Yeah. That's what it seems like. like or Dionysus. Super, super yeah, he kind of had the dark side, but yeah. they just looked at him as a drunkard and a partier. Did whatever well, he wanted. He was way more than just that, but he's just silly. He's your silly uncle who got way too drunk at <laughs> the Christmas party. Right? Yeah, yeah. So they, they make the powerful dudes look kind of weak and goofy, mm-hmm. and they make the powerful women look evil and shut them off yeah. the side. Mm, like, yeah. no fun. Exactly. <laughs> no fun or, yeah. like, jealous. Yeah, or, or scary. Yeah. Super scary. Yeah. Or okay. the mother. I know. It's either one or the other. Like, or you're the mother and you're at home and you're, like... Yeah. 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 But, I mean, I think of Aphrodite, though, and she seems like she leans more into doing what she wanted to do. But hers is more, like, you know, beauty, mm-hmm. self-care, that type yeah. of stuff. But I feel like in the Greek pantheon, maybe she could be the outlier. But, or, I mean... But is she, though? You know what I mean? That's like, true. I'm not sure. Like, she's definitely not Dionysus. No, yeah, I, she, I will correct myself on one thing. I say the Abrahamic faiths. Yeah. But you really only saw it once it became a political thing. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. So once it got used as a tool for conquering countries. Mm-hmm. Right? So we should probably say more of it was politics that were doing this and not mm-hmm. necessarily. Because I don't want to make it sound like the religions themselves were the bad side jokes. I don't think... I don't think any religion is inherently... or any spirituality is inherently evil or bad. No, I don't think so. I think okay. mankind ruins it. I think organized religion is bad because mankind fucks it up. Yeah, it's a reflection of yeah. who's yeah. practicing. The the base stories, the base lore, myth, you know, mythology, the, the books behind it, the messages are all fantastic. Mm-hmm. Right? It's just when man gets involved. So they, they when when they weaponize the religion as Paul in for political gains. Yeah. That's that's what I mean is, is when they start doing that. So. No, I agree with that. I mean you can see it in many different faiths yeah. depending like I mean, we were talking about mythology, like the Greeks weren't very well good to women and yeah. you have all these stories where you have goddesses being like, you know, assaulted and stuff like that and you can see that political uh, you know, because what were yep. women, what were they like in that structure? So I think it's definitely any of them are a reflection of who's practicing it more so. And because yep. you were, you know, you grew up and Catholicism was really good to you it was because of the people who were practicing exactly. that faith. So and you know you hear about Ireland and you mentioned the she and um, or they. Have you had experiences with them or how does how is that treated in your practice? So on the spiritual level, we respectfully keep our distance. Okay. Right. Um, we, we put offerings out. That was actually one of the first things we did was built an offer, uh, built an outside altar to the she okay. instead of leaving offerings. Um, if you're going to do that, you got to set boundaries, right? It was you can hang out in the garden, you can hang out in the woods. You're not allowed in the house. Mm-hmm. Our stuff is not your stuff, you know. Yeah. Because they're tricksters. They're you know a lot of people are like, oh, they're evil. They're not evil. They're not human. They don't subscribe to our morals, right? But if they see something shiny, they're like, oh, nobody's using that. That's mine. <laughs> right? It's like, yeah, it's, yeah. They, they have a whole different way of looking at things. Okay. Um, you know, there's definitely some of them that their view towards humanity is not always the best. And neither is mine at times. You know, mm-hmm. kind of sucks at, yeah. at that point. So I don't blame them for having negative looks at us. I don't blame humanity for having negative looks at them. You, know, it's, it's, you have stories and propaganda on both sides. Um, it's, it's always very cautious, though. Hell, there's uh, stories in recent years of a highway in Ireland being diverted around what was believed as a ferry map, so mm-hmm. they didn't disturb it. Oh, yeah. So the you know it's even recognized, even though you know it's now seen as superstition and, and not necessarily fully believed it anymore. Over there, they still do it. Oh yeah, you know, I heard there's that. still that respect. Yeah, <laughs> or the you trees. Know. Yeah, um, they will build around it. Exactly. Um, yep. Um, but we give a lot of recognition and a lot of thanks to the indigenous land spirits mm-hmm. in the area. Okay. Um, because so our, you know, that's our spiritual practice. Our magical practice falls into more of the, the folk magic side. Mm-hmm. But, um, I find it really difficult to try and practice Irish witchcraft because I don't have the tools available to me to do so. I don't have the plants they have. I don't have the water. I don't have any of the stuff that I would necessarily need. My practice leans very heavily Appalachian folk magic. Okay. So in that aspect, um, there's a lot of 
offerings also going out and thanks going out to indigenous land spirits. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, yeah, the she can come and go wherever they want, right? When they come across from the other world, they don't have to be necessarily in Ireland. They can come here to, to, to Bellevue. At least that's how I see it. There, there yeah. will be people that will argue that and say, no, nope, yes. that doesn't connect that way. That's what I heard. I was wondering uh, what your thoughts were on that. Like, because I've seen people get really worked up and say, no, they can't come to America. They're not here. Like, or it doesn't work that way. So, yeah, you answered it. Well, yeah, I think if you're giving them space and you're giving them yeah. a, a, a connection, I, they'll be able to come over. Okay. But the she are, uh, they're Irish. Correct. Spirits? Okay. Yeah. And then, so there's, like, earth spirits. Like, yeah. they fall on their face everywhere. Yeah. It's just they don't go by that name. Correct. Yeah. Okay. And I think, like, in, in a blanket term, it's kind of the same thing as where, you know, like you would hear an Irish person call them the fae folk okay. or the fairy folk. It, it's still kind of said, even, like, for the North American, they'll say, like, oh, yeah, it's it's fairies. Because okay. it's understood, right? Yeah. Um, I try to call them the, the land spirit mm -hmm. as, you know, to be a little bit more respectful in that aspect. Um uh, Jess has a friend who is of the Piscataway tribe. So, you know, we've learned a lot of stuff from her and just how to, you know, how they see things and, and view things. And, and it really connects really well with, the, with you know, our animistic views uh -huh. and our practices and our spirituality. So, you know, I've, I've tried to learn from that and, and give, you know, when I give an offering to the she, I'll give an offering to the, the, the land spirits. Okay. Because, you know what, that's, that's, if this is where I'm practicing, and this is where I'm pulling dirt and roots and trees and herbs, I should be thanking them. You know, I should be asking their permission. Like, hey, can I get a little bit, a little bit of your leaves right there? Can I, can I, can I, mm -hmm. I, I got a work to do. I mean, at least I need a little bit of that. Right? It's them giving me their permission. Uh -huh. So I, I should be all giving them an offering. I should be thanking them. So that's what we kind of try to do in, in the process. So, you know, it's, they're, they're everywhere. Mm -hmm. and as long as we give them, we give them the respect that they, they want, Mm -hmm. And they deserve, they'll they'll be respectful back. Okay. But anytime you're dealing with that kind of energy, it is it is inherently running the risk of running into a whole lot of chaos. It may not always be the the energy you're looking for. <laughs> <laughs> you got to set boundaries and you got to be respectful. Okay. Yeah. You're not the biggest and baddest in that situation. <laughs> yeah. You are definitely the weakest <laughs> and the vulnerable. <laughs> yeah, that's so interesting. I have, um was reading. I think it was DJ Conway. And she has a book on, um, it's like fairy, I forget, titles fairy something. And mm -hmm. she mentions these different types. There's so many different types of spirits. And oh, yeah. I'm pretty sure she, that's where I got the thing where she says that, like, it's like kind of like they're, it's like earth spirits, but different that yeah. type of stuff. Yeah. But she was saying that they are kind of annoyed with us because of how we're treating the planet. Now, this could have been her opinion. I don't know. And then um, she said they're not they're more reluctant to kind of show themselves to people mm -hmm. right now. So, okay. I would, I would agree with that. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But see, now that was where I would say there is the difference between the land spirit and the sheep. Mm -hmm. So the she are not of this world. Okay. Right. They're of, they're, they're, they're the good neighbors of the other world, right? They're of other world. They come across into our plane. Right. Mm -hmm. So do they give a shit how we treat this earth? Probably not. Okay. They may be a little irritated if they like it here. Like, why are you messing up my playground? Mm -hmm. Right? Whereas the land spirits are the spirit of the trees, the ground, mm. the water, the crop. You know, they are the spirits of Mother Earth. So they're going to be way more pissed off at us being disrespectful to the planet. Mm -hmm. So I can, I can see that's, that's where I would say there's that slight difference between the two. Okay. Okay. And then, um, so, other terms that like you hear a lot of when it comes to, like the fey is the sealy and unsealy quartz. What is? Can you explain that? Like, what is that? Is that like? Um... I honestly don't know much about that. Okay. So for me to take a guess would be okay. You know, inaccurate. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was just well, since we were talking about that, yeah. I was curious if you yeah. knew anything. Um, you hear like like you know, oh, the unsealy, leave them alone. Like, don't they're like. Certain well, types you should. I think it's a rule well, of thumb. It, people shouldn't mess around with, unless they're. And, yeah. Well, isn't it, isn't <laughs> kind of the belief of like almost like uh, light and dark fairies, like good fairy and bad fairy yeah. kind mm -hmm. of thing? I think that's what it is, yeah. Yeah, and I I would fall back on the, the aspect of they're not humans. They mm -hmm. don't have the same moral compass. So yeah. I don't think you really get that disparity of, 
both these ones are good and these ones are bad. Yeah. It's like a human because thing yeah, again, right? you're putting yeah. human, you're putting human moralities yeah. and quotations on it, right? And that's not like what is good. What is exactly? Bad? Yeah, interesting. Yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, because I mean, like when we grew up, like we were telling you a little bit about our family, like like we were there's certain things you don't say to like them, like these are spirits, like yep. um, you you know, just kind of don't say like thank you, for example. They would always say, oh, this is so beautiful, like if they do something for you, but don't like acknowledge like that they. So you don't tell about that. I always say thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's what our um our mom will tell it. Like I thought she thought I had like um like a spirit in my house that like helps out, and she's like. Oh yeah, that's a brownie. That's a brownie. And she was like, but you know, we have some stories with yeah. it. Yeah. We can chat all day about that. But like, you, we were like, oh, I moved in and you could see like this thing. And I'm like, mom, I think there's like a, I think the house has like a house spirit or you know, every house has a spirit. But yeah. I was like, and she's like, oh no, it's a brownie. And she's like, but look, she said, what? Don't say thank you. She like gives me this rundown of like what to say and not to say. And she's like, you know, they don't like to be seen. So like, you know, just she, she sees something, just turn this. Yeah, like, she said, I mean, you see none. something, you didn't see anything. <laughs> and I was like, okay. And I just, see, I'm I'm terrible at that because if I catch him by the corner of my eye, I'm like, saw ya. Really? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, all the time, all the time. That's probably why they're not always the biggest fan of me. <laughs> But I, I, yeah, I, I say thank you all the time. Really? And, and, you know, I don't, I, I never ask them for anything. Uh huh. Right? Um, when I say thank you, it'll be stuff like, you know, hey, peaceful living arrangement. Thank you. Mm-hmm. You know, like, I'll, I'll acknowledge that things are good. And it's mostly because, you know, if I didn't say my please and thank yous, my mom would whoop me. I can see that. I, cause like you have gratitude and I yeah. wonder, um, if it just, is like one of those things that went down the line, like certain, there's so many of them. There's so many yeah. different types. Like maybe that's like rules for specific. Yeah. Like if you try to make a deal, you um, make a deal. And like what you're doing. And I think, I think that's where it comes from. I think it's, I think it's more along the lines of you're making a deal or you're asking for something. Yeah. And yep. that thank you is kind of like signing the bottom line. Uh, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. So I never ask for anything. Yeah. I, I don't ask for help with anything. I don't ask yeah. them to bring me anything. The only time I'll ask them for anything is if something's missing. I'll be like, guys, I need my keys. Come on. Bring yeah. back. Yeah. Come on. See, our friend That's is missing a, um, we got um, him a bear too. He's very connected with bears. And, but he also is very connected with like earth spirits and stuff like that. And he gets the bear too. Like a week later, it's like missing. And I'm like, I think they took it. I think that they took it. And he's like, I loved it. I'm like, I think they took it. I was like, you have to ask them for it back. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if he's done it yet, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Find out. Yeah, that's always, I always think of that whenever something like little goes missing. Yep. Like, we always do. Guys. We always ask for it back. <laughs> yeah, it is beautiful to honor the spirits yep. that are like around your home and stuff like that. And like, I think when you like take care of the plants, they like it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I heard like if you see little sparkles, sometimes that's them, but I don't know how like <laughs> accurate that is. Because there's so many different like ways to interpret it. Um, well, speaking of like them, what are your thoughts on um, diamonds, like the Greek diamond and spirit? It seems like it's very broad. Do you think there's overlap with like nature spirits when it comes to that, or? I don't think I've heard anything on Greek diamonds. Really, that they're really cool. So diamonds, um, in Greek. Like, or, so we can talk about like Thurgy and like Neoplatonism mm-hmm. and stuff like that. They believed that everybody had a diamond. And so your diamond, diamond a, a eventually got split to be angels and demons. Okay. Once the church like got involved. Um, cause diamond is spelled like, de- like demon or demon. So oh, okay. people pronounce it differently. But back in antiquity, the diamond or daemon, however you pronounce it, was just this term for a wide variety of spirits and demigods could fall into that realm. Yeah. Your spirit guide, what we would consider as angels, what we consider as demon, it's just a broad term. And um, everybody has their own diamond and that's where spirit guide derives from that, your personal mm-hmm. diamond. And then like the holy guardian angel, you know, ceremonial magic, mm-hmm. you meet your holy guardian angel. That's also derived from the, di- the concept of your diamond. And so, um, I was curious if maybe earth spirits were, con- like, if there was, like, an overlap with that or... So, I'll be honest, yeah. as, as you guys can hear, I'm clogged up. Uh-huh. My ears are clogged. I thought you said diamond. Oh, like, diamond no, ring. No, 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 no. It's like, I've never heard this. This is interesting. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, yeah, as I have always understood it, that is just kind of like that blanket term of any um, non-human entity. Okay. So, I, I would assume that the... Okay. the 
the earth spirits would fall into that category. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. That's yeah. really it's interesting really cool. how everything yeah. is like interconnected. Like, yeah. In that way. Yeah. Um, so we're going on to an hour, over an hour. Did you want to talk about Baphomet? Because I know you mentioned that, or do you want to save that? We can save it. You want to save we it? We can save it. Are you sure? I don't think it connects with the episode. No, it doesn't connect. No, because we talk all about, like, the Morgan and yeah. Cosmic Book. We'll have, have Heavy back on again. Okay. Yeah. You are a phenomenal storyteller. Well, thank you. I know, we were like, like I was, like, roped I'm rigged, in like, just like <laughs> <laughs> You're a phenomenal well, storyteller. Well, good. My, yeah. my uh, mentor in the Bardic level of OB, the, the OBOD will be happy to hear that. So now on Mondays, I've been doing a, our afternoon post. We'll call it Mythology Mondays. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, it's just like one little, one little lore, one myth, whether it's a... You know, it's been goddesses so far mm-hmm. exclusively. This coming Monday is going to be the Chupacabra. So it's anything, you know, myth, cryptic, battle, whatever. Mm-hmm. So if you're in the Pittsburgh area, come over here. Come to one of the best medical shops in Pittsburgh. Yeah. We'll have everything linked down below. They have a really great selection, and they obviously, they're wealth of knowledge. So come here, pick their brains a little bit, and yeah. get informed. Yeah. <laughs> so is there anything you want to add before we end the episode? Uh, not really. Just thank you for having me on. This has been a lot of fun. I really yes. enjoyed this. Yeah, me too. Yes. We're having you on again. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, we can like, go on. Give you a guest spot. <laughs> yeah. I'll try not to sound like this next time. <laughs> <laughs>